guys, it's Kassara, and today I'm gonna be doing the Brandon Sanderson book tag. So this tag was created by Christy Lewis, Dostoevsky in space, and I was tagged by Michael Nip. Thank you so much, Michael, for tagging me this. I'm really excited to do this tag because Brandon Sanderson is one of the first authors that I read in the high fantasy genre, which is one of my favorite genres of all time. I've read pretty much all of his books, except for like a few here or there. Like I still have to get to Second Era, Mistborn, and Oathbringer, but like other than that, I've read almost everything else that he's written. So obviously he's one of my favorite authors and I'm really excited to get into this book tag. Also, this tag is very specific and very detailed. I'm pretty in awe about the amount of originality and creativity that went into this tag. So let's just get to the questions. So the first question is, Brandon wrote many early novels while working as a night clerk at a Provo hotel. What book kept you reading late into the night? So I tend to be a bit of a late night reader and I have a lot of books that have kept me really late up into the night. But the most recent one has to be The Sword of Kagen by M.L. Wang. Every time I picked up this book, I would just read for like hours on end. Like I could not stop reading this book just because it drew me into the story so much. I love these characters so much. It's just such an emotional journey the entire way. I could not stop reading this book. Like literally I was up till like 3 a.m. every night while I was reading this book and I had to wake up for work at like 6 a.m. So that was not okay. But I loved it so much that I just couldn't stop reading it. So this one definitely kept me up really late. So the next question is, Brandon's complex magic system set his fantasy apart. What subject do you love to read about in all of its complexity? So if you watch my channel a lot, this should not come as a surprise to you because I talk about it all the time, but I love politics and fantasy. Like intricate, complex, very detailed politics, I absolutely love. I like to see all the machinations behind what like creates a world and what keeps it running. And I love it so much, especially since a lot of times like people have to do things that they are not okay with in order to get everything working towards their ideals. I think the book that made me realize this the most is actually not a fantasy book, but it's Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. So this is a book that's set in 12th century England and that setting just reminds me of fantasy a lot just because a lot of books are set in sort of those types of times and it's about building a church. But one of the main characters, Brother Philip, is the one trying to build this church and he wants to bring this great thing to the community, but he has to kind of compromise his morals and stuff at times and play politics a lot in order to get this done. And he does such a good job of it. I love all of the details and intricacies that go into this. I really wish this was a fantasy book. There's no fantasy elements in this book. It's completely a historical fiction. It has the same vibe and feel as you would expect a fantasy book set in this setting. And I absolutely love it. And the politics are just so, so, so well done. And I absolutely love politics in all books, but this is the one that really made me realize that I absolutely love politics in fantasy books, even more so than the magic. So question number three, Brandon gets book ideas from watching other storytellers fail to execute a concept well, he figures out how to do it better. What two books handle the same concept in strikingly different ways and which do you prefer? So for this, I'm actually going to pull from Brandon Sanderson's line of work and I'm gonna talk about Warbreaker because it has a color-based magic system, which I really enjoy the concept and idea of a color-based magic system. And I like the way it's done in this book, actually. I really, really like the way it's done in this book. But there's another book, The Black Prism, that also has a color-based magic system that I think is done really, really well. I think both of these are fantastic books and they're done really well. And I like the way the magic system runs, but unpopular opinion here, I probably enjoy the magic system in the Lightbringer series a little bit more just because it's a little bit more intricate. And honestly, I feel like it's a little bit more of a harder magic system and I enjoy that aspect of it, but I still really like the magic system in Warbreaker. I just think the plot in Warbreaker outshines the magic system a little bit while the magic system is really what makes the Lightbringer series stand out for me. So love both of these, but unfortunately I do like the magic system a little bit better in the Lightbringer series. So question number four is Child Brandon was recommended several books about dogs that died. As a result, he became a reluctant reader. Please share a formative good or bad childhood experience. So when I was a kid, one of the first books that people handed me to read as a good book that I should like was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And I hated this book so much. I just thought it was so, so boring. And I DNF this book like several times, then I got spoiled for it. And I was just like, I don't think I need to read this book. And so I have 
never finished Little Women. I have been meaning to finish it for the longest while because I've heard it's really good and I feel like as an adult I might enjoy this more because I read classics now. But for the longest while I would not pick up classics at all because of my hate for Little Women. I know it's completely irrational but it just it didn't work for me at all. It was definitely not the type of book that I should have been picking up at the time. Like this is before I read Harry Potter. Like before I really got into reading they gave me Little Women to pick up and I was just like no. No, it was like one of the first chapter books they gave me to like I feel like that's like the worst thing to do But like this is considered like a middle grade series, which I just think it's too boring for kids It's just it's too boring for kids And I'm sure there are plenty of people out there like bashing me right now because they love little woman as a kid And it's one of their favorite books of all time. I'm sorry. I was a really picky kid as a reader So I, I didn't like this and it really made me shy away from classics for the longest while until about high school So yeah, little woman was definitely formative for me. So question number five is Brandon and several friends host a writing excuses podcast and they frequently invite guests. Please tell us about a collaborative fiction project and what you thought of it. So this I have to talk about Saga by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. I read this about a month ago now, not quite a whole month ago, but man this series made me love graphic novels. Like I had really almost never read graphic novels before I started the series and like it was almost immediate where I was just like wow i didn't know graphic novels could be this amazing and i recently saw a video it was actually on youtube about brian k vaughn talking about saga and even though he's the writer and fiona staples is the illustrator he talked about how much fiona staples really brought into the story one of my favorite characters in the story is lion cat which i mean only has one line over and over again which is lying but fiona staples just interpretation of it is so good lion cat is like one of my favorite characters of all time now like it's so so good just the expressions the nuances to lion cat is just perfect love it so much and like that's something that she brought into the story even as an illustrator and i think it's just such an interesting collaborative effort that made this series as good as it is and i'm really excited for them to start publishing again because i cannot wait to read the next volume of saga so question number six bannon's first book white sand prime was rewritten and eventually converted into a graphic novel called white sand what book would you like to see in another format I love screen adaptations. Absolutely love screen adaptations, especially of high fantasy. One series that I think would just make such a great TV series that would last like 12 plus seasons probably is Malaz and Book of the Fallen. Like I would love to see this on screen. One, because I think it would make it a lot more accessible to like mainstream readers. And I think a lot of people would flock to the series if they actually got to see it on screen and got to see it play out because wow, the things that happen in the series are so, so good, especially the end of Death House Gates, that would be amazing on screen if they do it right. Now, if it's low budget or anything like that, mm -mm, this would not work. But if they can do it like to the same level that Game of Thrones was done, I think this could be really huge and I would absolutely love to see this on screen. So question number seven, Brandon writes very quickly, what prolific author or authors would you recommend? So I do like these auto buy authors lists, which are basically authors that write a lot that I absolutely love. Like just off of the top of my head, I would probably recommend Robin Hobb, Joe Abercrombie. Like those are my big two that I recommend like all the time. Also Suzanne Collins, Kristen Hanna, and Frederick Bachman, especially those last couple if you don't like fantasy as much. But I love all of those authors. They're like my autobi authors, but I do have several videos where I talk about this as well. So question number eight, Brandon's Cosmere Universe books are grounded in platonic philosophy. What book or series gets you really excited about the source material? So I'm gonna nerd out on you guys a little bit because we're gonna talk about Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, which is inspired by the many worlds theory in physics and I absolutely love the many worlds theory especially the fact that it's so grounded in science it's such a fantastic thing that sounds like it has to be fantasy or science fiction but there's actual scientific evidence that the many worlds theory is possible specifically the double slit experiment I can get super into the details but I can't explain it as well as like particle physicists and quantum physicists so I'll link a video down below that just explains it so well but like oh my gosh the many worlds theory is so fascinating and the double split experiment like still confounds me and you know, like so many scientists today as well but I think it's just so so cool and I absolutely love the fictionalized version of it that is in dark matter definitely one of my favorite renditions of the many worlds theory so question number nine is that Brandon loves to show multiple sides of every issue and to contrast character values please share a book that handles controversy well so a book that I've actually talked a little bit on my channel recently that I think handles controversy really well is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank 
green. So this book is a new adult sci-fi novel following a character named April May. She finds this giant statue in the middle of New York City and decides to make a YouTube video of it and she goes viral overnight because apparently these giant statues have been in every major city in the entire world. It might be aliens. There are like these huge debates about it and these almost like political style party battles going on about what they call them the Carls what these Carls are about and uh, it's just so good. It just creates this huge controversy in the story and I think it's handled so well and the outcome of the plot and how that goes is handled so so well in the first book in the series and I absolutely loved it. It's such a surprising read because based off of like the description of it you wouldn't think it's as good as it is but it is so so good mainly because the character April May is amazing and I love this book so much. And question number 10. Brandon Sanderson is a writing teacher and unlike some writing teachers he posts his lectures online for free. What free literature resource are you grateful for? My number one favorite resource that I'm so so grateful for is the library and specifically the Libby app. The library near me is not great and is not on the Libby app and it makes me really sad but the one by my parents house is amazing. They have pretty much any book that I'm looking for except for like really really obscure titles. They'll pretty much have everything and they get new releases like on release day and they're all free through the Libby app and I love it so much. Like 90% of my audiobooks come from the library through the Libby app and I read so many audiobooks like at least like 10 to 12 per month and I absolutely love it. Like I don't think I would read half as many books as I do now if it wasn't for the Libby app. So I'm so so grateful for the Libby app and recently I've also discovered the Hoopla app which is also through the library which is also amazing and I absolutely love it also. So highly recommend both of those if you haven't checked those out yet. All right so I think it's tag time. So I think my Michael tagged most of the people that I would probably try and tag for this. So I'm also going to tag Jesse May if you haven't done this tag yet. I think you're a fan of the Stormlight Archive. It is definitely a really interesting tag so I hope you do it. And also Jesse from the bookish mom. You mentioned recently that you need to finish the Mistborn series so I feel like you would enjoy doing this tag as well. So both of you guys are tagged and I hope you guys end up doing this tag. Also if you are just watching this video I would love to watch your answers to these questions. If you've read any of these books let me know down in the comments because I would love to discuss with you guys. I post videos on Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, so consider subscribing. And if you want to be notified as soon as I upload, you can click that little bell icon. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. All social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!